Hello and welcome. Sit back and grab that cup of coffee. We're getting back into the book of Luke with chapter 9 today. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal diseases. The apostles' healing ministry here was to authenticate their upcoming preaching ministry. Verse 2, And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither a staff, nor a bag, nor bread, nor money, and do, do not even have two tunics apiece. This was the apostles' first solo mission, and God was putting their faith to the test. Their assignment required complete and total dependence upon Christ. This was also to be a brief mission to identify whether or not the nation of Israel would accept their Messiah. Verse 4, Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that city. And as for those who do not receive you, as you go out from that city, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. And this was a way of telling them that their judgment would be on their own stubborn heads. Okay, verse 6. Departing, they began going throughout the villages, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed, because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the prophets of old had risen again. A Tetrarch was a ruler of one quarter and would receive a fourth of a kingdom. Herod Antipas ruled as a Roman client and was responsible for building projects, including the capital city of Tiberias along the Sea of Galilee. Verse 9, Herod said, I myself had John beheaded, but who is this man about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. When the apostles returned, they gave an account to him, Jesus, of all that they had done. Taking them with him, he withdrew by himself to a city called Bethsaida, which was near the Sea of Galilee also. Uh, verse 11, but the crowds were aware of this and followed him, and welcoming them, he began speaking to them about the kingdom of God and curing those who had need of healing. Now the day was ending, and the twelve came and said to him, Send the crowd away, that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside and find lodging and get something to eat, for here we are in a desolate place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish unless perhaps we go and buy food for all these people, for there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, Had them sit down to eat in groups of about 50 each. They did so, and had them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and broke them, and kept giving them to the disciples to set before the people. And they all ate and were satisfied, and the broken pieces which they had left over were picked up, twelve baskets full. And it happened that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he questioned them, saying, Who do the people say that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, but others, that one of the prophets of old has risen again. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. But he warned them and instructed them not to tell this to anyone, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. So Jesus did not want them telling anyone because it would hinder Christ's mission and divert public attention from his message. And he was saying to them all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Big statement here. He was telling the apostles that following him would come with a big price. They would need to give up their own desires, and similar to military police or a fireman's oath, it would mean following him even if it would cost them their lives. Verse 24, For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me in my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory, and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I say to you truthfully, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. This was a reference to Peter, John, and James and the upcoming transfiguration that we're about to read. Verse 28. Some eight days after these sayings, he took along Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, 
and his clothing became white and gleaming. And behold, two men were talking with him, and they were Moses and Elijah. And this is significant because they were representatives of the law and the prophets, displaying approval of the fulfillment of their earthly ministry, now complete in the Messiah. Okay, verse 31. Who, appearing in glory, were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions had been overcome with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And as these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not realizing what he was saying. Okay, so these were not tabernacles like the massive structure in Exodus, but booths that were used to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles uh, when the Israelites dwelt in booths for seven days. It was more like a portable tent. While he was saying this, a cloud formed and began to overshadow them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Then a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and reported to no one in those days any of the things which they had seen. The purpose of the transfiguration of Christ into at least a part of his heavenly glory was so that the inner circle of his disciples could gain a greater understanding of who Jesus was. Christ underwent a dramatic change in appearance in order that the disciples could behold him in his glory. The disciples, who had only known him in his human body, now had a greater realization of the deity of Christ, though they could not fully comprehend it yet. This would give them hope, encouragement, and the reassurance they would need when receiving the shocking news of his coming death. God obviously knew that they would need this type of assurance. John and Peter later both wrote about this. In uh, John chapter 1, he says, We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only. And in 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter wrote, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We, we ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Okay, so we're going to stop here today. We'll pick up tomorrow on verse 37. It's a longer chapter, so I don't want to rush through it. Uh, but let's pray. Lord, again, thank you for another day. Super grateful to be here and with my family and friends and even strangers. Uh, how you bring people from across the globe to gather together under one great name. And we great, gratefully uh, appreciate that, Lord. Um, I pray that more people who hear your words would receive you and not reject you, as uh, we saw in our chapter today. Um, I pray that people's hearts would not be hardened, that you would release that bondage that's holding them back from uh, knowing and surrendering, surrendering to you. During these times of uncertainty, Lord, please allow people to understand their lack of control and their need for a Savior. Use this crisis to open eyes and ears of many, many people, Lord. I pray this. Please give us great faith to trust in you, and please remove any doubts that the enemy wants us to have, Lord. May we all consider the cost of following you and give us the strength to be all in for you. Uh, please, Lord, give us the boldness and the courage that we'll, we will need every day. Thank you for revealing your glory to us through the pages of Scripture and giving us hope in the eternal bodily life that awaits us so that we don't need to be afraid of anything that this world would, would put in our way. But let us rest in the hope you've provided for us, Lord. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys very much. Great day. Um, glad you guys could be here and really enjoy this study with you. Have a great one.